So my name is Richard Craster and I'm, uh, well, I'm about to become Dean of Natural Sciences at Imperial College and I'm also the co-director of the UK Acoustics Network, which is why I'm here. So the UK Acoustics Network is funded by the EPSRC, a government, uh, government grant, uh, which unfortunately expires relatively soon and we're, we're busy uh, attempting to get the next tranche of uh, funding for, for acoustics. And the purpose of the UK Acoustics Network is, is to bring together the people doing acoustics from industry and academia so that we all try to work together for the benefit of, of acoustics in the UK as a whole. And as part of that, we teamed up with the IOA to produce a document about the value of acoustics to the economy. Now, this is a document that's never sort of been done before, so, so it took quite a bit of effort. And the person who helped us was John Lincoln, who works for, or, or, or he, he runs his own company, but he runs for something called he, he runs something called the Photonics Leadership Group, or he's he, he's a str he's, he's a strong partner in that grouping. Now, the photonic photonics and acoustics are very similar in that they're enabling technologies. Often, photonics is the science of of, of light, how how you use light and optics, that the, the wave mechanics of the, of those subjects, in order to produce sensors and so on. Acoustics plays a very similar role. And so both subjects sort of suffer because in the, the, the great strength but also the great suffering of these subjects is that they cross cut many things. Often people build something and then afterwards it sounds like a bag of rotten spanners or something, it sounds terrible. And then they need to retrofit on a solution. The same is often true in, 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 in photonics where one wants to create something but photonics is a sort of building block of the bigger thing. And so these particular subjects tend to get forgotten in things like government strategies because it's not always the acoustics that's the central thing, it might be the other object that's the central thing. And as a result, when you're trying to uh, argue that there should be more funding going into acoustics research, it's a bit difficult when you're trying to deal with government ministers or civil servants who say, well, why? Who, how many people are employed? What's the value of acoustics? And so Photonics, a few years ago, did an exercise very similar to the one that we did. And so we basically asked John Lincoln to help us because there's no point in reinventing the wheel. And he very kindly gave me his slides, which are, which are these. So I'm stealing his slides. And so the UK Photonics people produced a document called The Hidden Economic Engine. And it was remarkably successful because as a document to give to ministers, give to civil servants, even within their own industry, it was a remarkably powerful document to justify why you should care about photonics. And so, I, 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 as a scientist, I work on the mechanics of waves. I don't, I, obviously I, I like acoustics very much, but I also work in many other subjects of waves, basically. To me, it's all just waves, it doesn't really matter too much what the context is. And as a result, I came across this document and I thought, what a wonderful document. Wouldn't it be wonderful if acoustics had a document like this? So we busied ourselves to produce this document, which is on its way round. I, I rather foolishly didn't bring a pile of them with me. I do have a pile in my office, I'm very sorry. There's one of them coming round. They are available online on our website, www.acoustics.ac.uk, a very imaginative uh, web page. <laughs> but in there, under resources, you will, find, you will find this document. And in it, we spent a considerable amount of time trying to figure out how we justified acoustics. Uh, we built upon the photonics. And lots of products have acoustics in them. So you might say, what's an acoustics business? There are very few businesses that are acoustics. There are lots of companies that use acoustics. Your BAE systems, you know, there's a as a submarine, it's basically an underwater acoustic device. But they're not an acoustics company. They must employ, employ acoustics engineers, but how many do they employ? What is the value of those acu acousticians to our economy? And so the, ch the challenge for any enabling, enabling uh, technology, particularly when the government strategy, I, I don't wish to bore you too much about the government strategy, but when you read the grand challenges, they're very kind of, kind of siloed. You know, clean energy. And uh, yeah, you, you look at all these things and think, well, acoustics doesn't fit into your know, healthy aging. Okay, I can imagine hearing loss fitting and a bit of noise fitting in there, but you know, it, there, there isn't a kind of silo which says enabling technology acoustics. 
So how do we fit ourselves in there? So the government, the government has an industry strategy, and it's, it is an important thing. I mean, it does, may not feel important, but if you're at the receiving end of going out there to fight for grants or fight for your science, this is actually really important because it's how the government is, is structuring from the top down how it is putting money into science. If you don't fit into one of those boxes easily, it could be a little bit of a struggle to figure out how you're going to get funding to do the research that we think <coughs> is necessary. And so the government has committed ourselves to investing 2.4% of our GDP on science, which is a good number. It puts us up there, puts us above Estonia and a few other places, and puts us, puts us pretty much where we should be in terms of, um, of, of Europe. And, but the, this ambition to go to 2.4 GDP it means that we're going to invest an extra 4.7 billion in our research and development. Now, they're not going to just spray this across science blindly, sadly. What they're going to do is they're going, they've defined from the top down grand challenges. And these grand challenges are artificial intelligence and data. Sorry, I've dropped this. <coughs> Aging society, clean growth, and the future of mobility. And there are some pillars. So you, you have to get used to the government language slightly. Uh, pillars. I, there are pillars, themes, all sorts of things. But the, the challenges are these four things. The, the pillars are ideas, people, infrastructure, business environment, places. And the mechanism by which they de deliver this is the Industry Strategy Challenge Fund. And the name of the game is to align yourself with it. Um, so the focus is on these strategy challenge funds, they're rather vertical and if we look at what they are, there are various centres and things which, which have been identified. So underneath, underneath this are these, the, the specific challenges, the Faraday ba battery challenge, healthy ageing, quantum technologies, robots for a safer world, driverless cars, etc, etc. Nowhere in there is the word acoustics. Where on earth do we fit into all of this? Now I can imagine, and in fact the things that we've been doing are saying things, driverless cars are going to need voice recognition. That's acoustics. If I, if I look at healthy aging and I think that one in six of us are going to suffer hair loss by the time we're 60, that's acoustics. We have to lock ourselves into, we have to interweave ourselves into all of this. So the purpose of the document that's going around is exactly that, it's to interweave us with that stuff so that when we go to a civil servant and then we, they say, acoustics doesn't fit in any of this, I'm not interested. You know, where are you in this? I'm not going to give you any money. We hand them that document and we say, yes, we are. We're in just there. And they say, what? Well, okay, okay, I'll give you that. But no, we're acoustics, it's old fashioned stuff. Everyone knows about acoustics. And we say, OK, but there are several thousand people employed in this, and you know, here's the evidence. So it becomes harder and harder to argue against funding acoustics when you are providing them with evidence. And they always claim, so the, the standard answer is that the, the, the policy is based on evidence. It's evidence-based policy. Of course, the evidence is in the eye of the beholder, but once you've got evidence, it's a bit hard to deny it. The standard way you get pushed away from government is go away and bring me the evidence. If you don't have any evidence, then they won't give you, then, then that's the standard push away. Now we have the evidence, so. Um, so, in order to try to push for more funding for, 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 for acoustics, and in order to promote, in order to actually show how good acoustics is, we need evidence. How big is the industry? How productive is it? How many people are employed? Where do they work and who are they? They're basic questions, but they're not very easy to find those answers, as we discovered. It's like it's a bit of a journey. I'm gonna, I could tell you how we did it all, but and in fact, I, I, I'm very happy to answer questions on that if, if necessary. So, at the very minimum, there are 16,000 people employed in acoustics. The value add per employee, so the value add is, is a way in which you take, it's, a it's an economics calculation, which I won't necessarily go into. The turnover, or the, the, the volume, shall we say, of, of, of business that we produce in the terms of acoustics is 4.6 billion pounds. And there are at least 750 companies. So these are real numbers. And there, at the very back of that document, which is going around, there's a methodology which says how we determine this. 
We determine this by going to companies' house. We determine this by extracting the top 20 or so companies that work. There's a huge tail of companies with a relatively small number of employees and a, and a, and a relatively small number of, of companies with a very large number of employees. And when you go through this, then of course you ask yourself, what percentage of Dyson's turnover is acoustics? It's a hard question to answer. So what we did was we got 20 experts from industry. So we didn't get a bunch of academics like myself, because I think my estimates might have been slightly off. We, we, we got people from industry in relatively senior positions, or indeed in senior positions, to give us advice and to basically vote on how, what percentage in the automotive business, what percentage of that business if, if, if you are Jaguar Land Rover, what percentage of your business, what percentage, how many employees do you have in acoustics, what percentage do you have? And so we did that as best we could by using a panel of industry experts to get us those numbers. So I believe these numbers are about as good as you can get. And I think that so we did this last year, we haven't done it this year because we're preparing for, in fact, trying to go to the government to ask for more money for acoustics for the UK Acoustics Network, but I think next year we will aim to redo this so that it becomes a living document. And I think the more this document is known in the acoustics community, the more likely this is to A, increase. I, I, I suspect these numbers will increase because we will have missed companies and it will gradually become more and more accurate. Um, so it's not trivial to do. Um, if you look in company's house, there isn't an industry code which says acoustics. So you can't just go down and find, click on the word acoustics and all acoustics companies come out. Uh, the companies that we, op with, that we looked at, there are people making headphones and loudspeakers. There are people, um, there are Jaguar Land Rover, there's Dyson, there's BAE Systems, there's a whole range, there's a whole bunch of people doing underwater acoustics. There's a whole range of companies that are doing things, but where acoustics is not the main thing. There will be architectural acoustics companies, big big building firms, um, people doing soundproofing of lecture theatres, but the building of the lecture theatre is the big thing, but the soundproofing might be the slightly subsidiary thing until of course you sit in it and it doesn't sound so good. And so we, we determined we had a systematic methodology. It's a bit small there, so I'm not expecting you to strain your, strain your eyesight. But we decided, first of all, we defined what acoustics was. Companies involved in the generation and manipulation, control, transmission, detection of sound so, and vibration. So we excluded things like universities. We included services design and hardware. We excluded a whole bunch of higher music and guitars. You can imagine when you search through Company's House, you get acoustic angels who turn out to be some band, et cetera, et cetera. And so we, we excluded them, although they did sound rather good. So I thought, thought about putting them in there. Um, we, we, didn't, we didn't say, we didn't put a constraint on frequency. So things like ultrasonics are in there, um, ultrasonic inspection, um, all sorts of things, but they have to be basically doing acoustics. Uh, but we defined acoustics in a particular way and then threw out things that didn't fit that definition. Um, we had a kind of, so this is zooming in now, so we had a kind of, we had to go through company's house, find their addresses, we had to remove all the duplicates, oddly enough there are a fair number of them, get a kind of candidate list, then, then we had a couple of thousand, myself and a few other people went through them, removing the acoustic angels and all the other bits and pieces. And eventually we ended up with a comprehensive list of UK acoustics companies with their identifiers. We then went to a company which does uh, Dun & Bradstreet, I think I've got their names right. They're the people who you go to if you want to find out about a company, its credit and so on. They're like a credit scoring agency for companies. So we went to them to find the turnover, the number of employees, etc, etc for, for all of this. And so then we use that in order to figure out how many people, what the gross value added was, and find out all this information. Uh, the upshot is that this is what acoustics does to, to the UK economy. So I think this is a powerful thing to have, uh, both whether you work in industry or whether you work in academia. You can now say, this is what acoustics does. It's a good estimate, it's not, it's not perfect, but it's a decent estimate. Um, the 
and the other nice thing about having this is that over time we will be able to look if we keep doing it as a community I'm not saying necessarily that I personally will do it but you know if as a, if as a community we we decide that we wish to keep doing this we will be able to see <laughs> the growth or otherwise of acoustics in the UK um, I fear that I'm probably heading off have I headed into too much time am I Five minutes. oh good um, so we can compare ourselves with other businesses and other things so we can look at the you know steel versus us versus photonics versus pharma versus automotive and we can work out what the percentage is so four four point six billion we're less than the steel works we're considerably less than nuclear but you know, it's not a, it's not a terrible number and when you come to deal with the government then you want to be saying things like you know, that 4.6 billion is two percent of the entire engineering output of the country that's not a bad that's not a bad number so in other words perhaps one could argue that we should be getting greater than two percent of the research investment in engineering into acoustics this might be an argument that one could now justify using that um, you, we could start cherry picking numbers we could say that the average wage of someone doing acoustics of 46k is higher than the manufacturing average or the engineering average so therefore acoustics you know, acoustics is a high value thing and something that one as a government one might wish to promote these are the other sorts of arguments that you can start doing now you've got actual real numbers um, where are the people located so we can use companies house and the it's a bit slightly distorted into London in that some large companies of course will have their headquarters here but all the staff might be somewhere else nonetheless you can start saying what is the distribution of people around the country I'm, I'm, I am running out of time um, so just, just, to, just to flick on just quickly um, what so the, the other thing once you've got this huge long list is you can say 98% of the companies that we found are tiny they're noise consultancies with with two people five people ten people but they're tiny the vast majority if you if you if you're doing an economics thing is in terms of large companies that, that, that employ 40 to 50 people in, a, in an acoustics group or 100 people um, and with, with a very large turnover but what's quite nice in terms of arguing to government is that there is this range of very large companies but also this tail of very small companies <coughs> spread across the country and, and, and it's, uh, it, it, it provides a nice, a nice description of what's going on um, I, can, I can go into the revenue of things I, I, I suspect I'm, I'm going to run out of time the research grants in acoustics which is from the university end of things um, in terms of government investment there are more than 200 grants into, into basically almost 50 uh, institutions across the country there, there are various research councils depending if you're into, uni, into the university world but there are some which are um, environmental research councils BBSRC would be the biological one EPSRC would be the engineering and physical sciences one and the spread is it, it, it is nicely distributed across this the MRC which is the medical research council in terms of medical acoustics <coughs> and so on they're also putting money into acoustics but now we have now we actually have the the data in front of us we can start playing around with seeing what, what, where, where the pe where the jobs are, and we can perhaps give a try to advise or at least um, try to get civil servants to think about how they how they should strategically invest in acoustics. So just to cheer everybody up, the uh, UK grand challenges sound as if they're not going to be anything to do with us. Let's choose one: the future of mobility. Or, or let's add, let's add artificial intelligence and data. That's the one that sounds even further away from us. So, so the next line down on the government stuff is audience of the future, next generation services and quantum technology. It looks like we don't fit in there. Until you think about voice control and the audience of the future, the self-driving vehicles, Alexa and all these things. What about active noise suppression so that those things can actually hear us whilst the engine's going and whilst the winds whilst that's going on uh, artificial speech you know maybe maybe we maybe we want to type things and it speaks perfectly naturally to us maybe they're going to fit into the audience of the future and next generation services what about artificial 
acoustics intelligence. How about how are we going to use AI and voice? How are we going to uh, those those things are all going to those things are all going to come along. Uh, so anyway, to cheer us up, the titles sound terrible. Healthy aging. What's it got to do with acoustics? But it's not actually terrible at all. It's in fact good news to us all.